Hello, uh, welcome to another Houdini session. My name is Gianvito Serra and today we're going to take just a closer look at what we can do with attributes inside of Houdini. Okay, so we're going to show you just different ways so we can actually create attributes as well as different ways so we can actually manipulate them and move them in between meshes uh, so that we get a little bit more familiar with some of the operations that are available for us for attributes. Okay. Uh, likewise, we're also going to look into different ways to visualize attributes, which is equally important as it is to be able to create them. Okay, so let's start with our uh, head that we are using for testing, and we're going to go ahead and create an attribute to begin with. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the attribute create and how it actually works, where you can create multiple attributes inside of this node. Uh, in this particular case, we're creating an attribute called my attribute, which is a point type, and it's actually a three, float three type of attribute. Okay, so it has a, and it has a value set to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Okay, if we remember from the previous lessons, we can middle mouse on this, and we can see that it creates a attribute that is a point type called my attribute next to the P for the positions. And it even creates a variable mapping, which we'll, you will see later how we can use it, called my attribute all caps, okay, which it does by default. If we go into the parameter spreadsheet, we are looking also at my attribute in the spreadsheet. And we can come in here and change these values and see the values uh, change on the fly. Very cool. Now, we can, without having to go into the paint shop, uh, we can immediately see what that actual value looks like on the mesh uh, using some display options. So if we go to the little icon with the eye here, which opens the display options, and we go to geometry, we can choose to override the color attribute with any attribute. So instead of using CD, we can say, you know what? I wanna see my attribute instead of the color. So I can say my attribute, oops. And now you will see that the gray value that we have here is reflected on the model. But most importantly, I can change the value here and you can see the value actually changing, okay? If I came here, for example, and I did a random number based on the value Y, I get what you will expect, even though it's not the color attribute, okay? So I can turn that off and then again, I'm looking at just the color of the mesh, or I can turn that on and I'm looking at my value of my attribute as an actual color, okay? Let's delete these channels, and then let's go back to 0 0.3, like we had it before. We can look at it this way, okay? So that's one way how we can visualize attributes, okay? We can always visualize attributes if we want to by simply coming to the display options, okay, and I'll show that again. Let's go to the display options, and look for the geometry tab, and turn this on, and choose the name of your attribute you want to see. You can also choose to do infrared visualization, grayscale visualization, black body visualization, etc., etc. There is just multiple ways that we can use to visualize for these attributes, okay? Now, the paint operator we have seen is an operator which we can use to modify any attribute other than color, okay? Um, in this particular case, if we turn off, when we actually enter the tool state, immediately puts us in the attribute which we're modifying, which in this case is the my attribute that we created before, okay? If we look at the spreadsheet, the values are still set to 0 0.3, but as we come here and start painting some of these colors, you will see that values will start changing in the parameter spreadsheet as well for that, okay? So this is basically not painting colors. It is painting the value of my attributes. It just uses colors to show you what it looks like, but it is indeed painting a different attribute than the color, an, attribute, an arbitrary attribute that we created ourselves, okay? From this side, we have something a little bit different, okay? What I'm going to, what I'm going to do is to actually modify the geometry slightly, and I'm going to reduce it just to change the topology, okay? Because I wanna show some stuff here in a second. 
Then I'm going to create a new attribute here. And let's take a look at this, which is going to be called my attribute vector. Okay. So the vector attribute, the way how it works is that it actually is that it actually shows the uh, it actually is a vector type. So therefore, it's more like than a color. It's more like a direction. Okay. And it can actually be represented with visualizers as well. So you will notice that if you look at the normals, the normals still look like you would expect, right? We can change this value that has no effect on the actual normals. But what we can do is that we can go to the display options again and go to visualizers and create a visualizer to view this particular attribute, my attribute vector. So we press plus here. We can say that we want a new visualizer of the marker type. And I am going to call this my attribute vector. Okay. And I'm going to come to the attribute type and I'm going to call my attribute vector. And I want it to actually be not text. See, you can already immediately see the value of the attribute being displayed, but we don't want to see it as text. We want to see it as an actual vector. Okay, so there we go. So the yellow one is the one that we created here, my attribute vector. And as we actually modify the length here, you will see that we're able to see both attributes at the same time, the attribute of the normals and the attribute that we the custom attribute that we created called my attribute vector. Okay, we can even show little arrow tips if you wanted to actually really show the direction. Okay, so that's how you can create a custom visualizer to see a vector attribute. Okay. So while we're visualizing that attribute, we can come to the combo operator and oh, let me reset my changes here and go ahead and actually start combing the actual direction of the actual of the part of the particular vector that we created okay so we can control and we did this in the exercise of the uh, we did this on the exercise of the actual uh, we did this on the exercise on the of the uh, Tree generate of the forest generation where we use where we brush the normals to actually position the trees. We don't have to use the normals, we can use our own attribute if we want. And you will notice here too that the shading of my mesh is not changing because I'm not forcing the and not modifying the normals. I am just modifying my own vector attribute that I created for the points. Okay. We can now come here and do an attribute transfer. Now an attribute transfer is going to take whatever mesh is coming here and transfer attributes from whatever mesh it comes here. Okay? So it's a little bit like Maya's attribute transfer or transfer attributes, except that it works with any attribute that you can possibly imagine. I mean, it's not limited to just colors, UVs or whatever. I mean, you can create just completely arbitrary attributes and transfer them in whichever way you want. Um, so a lot of controls here for like, for example, being able to control the distance of which we transfer. There is also, uh, you can even increase your samples that you transfer from to get like a more like smoother result. Or even actually do a little bit of a blend bias if you're using some of these other modes. But you can use attribute transfer to transfer attributes in between meshes that have different topologies altogether. Okay. There is also an attribute copy, which allows you to do the same thing on meshes which have the same topology, okay? There is also a very useful attribute mirror, which allows you to mirror any attribute in whichever axis you want. So in this particular case, what we're doing is that we're actually mirroring the norm, the vector that we created from one side to the other, okay? We can at any point come in here and pick this little handle right here, and even, it's a little handle, and even rotate it to modify the direction at which we actually transfer the attribute. We can also do that here if we want. So for example, we can do that at an angle. Now the mirroring happened at this angle. We can also choose what distance, at what distance we're going to actually mirror. Or what is, where is our mirror plane at? And mirror attributes in a particular way, okay? So here you can actually specify which attributes you want to mirror and just mirror them away. It's very simple to use. Very cool. All right, let's come over here. 
And then what we have here is a, our file, and we created what is called a primitive attribute. So it's an attribute that goes not on the points, but it goes on the actual primitives on each one of the polygon faces, okay? Like I said, I, Houdini attributes can be of a point type, or a primitive type, or polygon type, or an actual detail attribute, uh, or a vertex type if you want to do stuff like UVs. This particular type of attribute is actually a string type, okay, which means it's actually not a number or a floating value, it's like text basically. That's so for what I'm saying here is that I'm looking at faces 0 to 500, which we can see here if we look at the numbers. And saying for for create an attribute called my attribute prim and uh, faces 0 to 500, set the string to delete me. Okay? So if we look at the parameter spreadsheet, we'll go to the primitives, you will notice that I have that attribute and that some polygons have the delete me string and some polygons do not, okay? Very cool. So now we, similar to what we're able to visualize the vectors, we can come here to our display options and create a new visualizer type. It's gonna be a marker again. And we're gonna call this my my attribute prim. And the attribute that we're gonna use is going to be my attribute prim. My attribute. Okay. And this one will definitely be a touch type. Let me just make sure I type that right. And the touch color is probably fine. So we're going to just say Okay, and we're gonna make sure that it's on. Right, let me see, for some reason we don't have it shown, it's probably because I so didn't do this right. Let me just make sure I'm copying the attribute correctly. Okay, let's see, oh, we need to make sure that we switch the class from point to primitive, there we go. Now we can see it. So what we have in here is tets on top of each polygon which is marked as with the string delete me, okay? We can change this 500 number 500 here, and as we change the number, you will see that more faces get assigned the delete me string. Okay, very cool. So what, we can, what can we do with that? Well, for this particular test, as you can imagine, we're going to delete those polygons. And this blast node does exactly that. And see that as we actually change the number, the faces that get deleted actually change based on that attribute, okay? And the way how we do that is that we actually have a little expression here that says, that checks whether my attribute prim is equals to delete me, okay? This particular group expressions that you see here, they are basically, uh, expressions which look directly into the attributes of a geometry and check if they match a condition. So in this case I'm doing my attribute, is my attribute prim equals to delete me? And if it is, the points that the primitive IDs that are associated with that meet that condition will be added to the group of faces to be deleted, okay? So this allows you to very, very quickly use attributes as if they were groups without having to create a group first, which is very, very useful, okay? You can do the, you can do equals, but you know, you can also use greater than or lesser than, which in this case is not gonna do too much because we have a stain. We can also do, for example, not equal to actually not delete them, okay? Uh, you can also delete non-selected here with the blast, and you can see the primitives that we actually deleted. Okay. So a lot of ways where you can actually use these attributes to be able to drive what you want the final effect to be. Okay. But remember when you're actually writing a, this group expression right here, that it is all one word, no spaces, because this is essentially a wildcard, if you will, that is generating groups for you, okay? So remember that uh, when you're using this kind of expression right here, just don't use spaces. Other expressions are fine, okay? Now, 
we go over here, we're also going to show you a new way of doing this. So we're going to create what is called a detail attribute. A detail attribute is an attribute that travels with the whole geometry. Okay, so just like there is a point component, a primitive component, and a vertex component, there is a component that is basically your whole shape. Okay, and if we go to the parameter spreadsheet, you can actually see those by going into the little detail tab here, okay? You will notice that there is an attribute created called big face threshold, which is the one that we created with this create, to be create. There is actually one also called big var map, okay? And this is an automatic attribute, which is created by the create attribute create sub, which maps your attribute to a variable automatically so that you can use it on expressions, okay? If you middle mouse here, you will notice that we have a point attribute, we have a vertex attribute, which is UVs, and we have detail attribute called big face threshold right here, okay? Now, what we're going to do here now is use a measure sub. Now, the measure sub is a very useful operator which allows you to create some statistical attributes on the fly. In this particular case, for example, we're using a measure to measure the area of the polygons of the primitives. So this creates a new attribute called primitive area. Okay. If we look at the uh, parameter sp pro geometry spreadsheet and we look at the primitives. Oh, that's right. We need to make sure that we create we do it here. You notice that now we have an area attribute, which is equals to the area of the po each one of the polygons. Okay. And last, what we're going to do is that we're going to use an expression, which is delete node, to pick up that area attribute and delete it if the face tre if it's smaller than the face big face threshold or bigger than the big face threshold. Okay. And here is the expression. So what we're doing here is that we're looking at the area. And it, we're checking to see if it's bigger than the big face threshold. And if it is, we're deleting the primitives. Okay. Looking a little bit closer to this, what we're doing here is we're checking the measure node. We're looking for based on the primitive number that we're currently processing and looking at the area attribute and checking if it's bigger than the big face threshold. Now, this is two ways to access an attribute. In this particular case, I did not use a variable because the measure sub does did not have does not create variables the attribute create sub does create variables so that's why I use a variable if you can i actually recommend not using variables just because uh they are you know very quickly becoming obsolete in favor of like expressions or in favor of like some new syntax that is going to be available in a new houdini so in new versions of houdini but what we have, what we can do here instead of using a variable is to use the detail expression, which is just like the point expression and the primitive expression. But detail allows me to pick up a natural detail attribute. So we can do, go back to the measure one as well. Because this is a detail attribute, we don't have to provide an ID number. I mean, the mesh is, there is just one mesh. The attribute that we're looking for is called big face threshold. And we're looking for the first index, which in this case there is only one, so that's fine. And that's the same thing as what I had before, but using a prim expression, which picks up an attribute from a primitive, and a detail expression, which picks up an attribute from the a detail attribute. Okay. Moving along, here is another example of using of using vertex attributes. So we obviously we can use we can create UVs on the vertices, but we can also, for example, create colors on the vertices, okay? And they basically behave as if they were basically split on the actual points. In this particular case, we have random colors, which is what we're doing this. Um, it's the same thing if you were doing normals. Uh, this will allow you to, for example, have hard normals in your geometry, okay? Um, and another thing, that, so, and the attribute mirror will work with any attribute type to allow you to actually do, for example, mirroring of attributes, okay? So here is our actual mirrored uh, vertex colors. And similarly to how we did before, we can use this to rotate how we're actually mirror, with the mirror plane for this. 
as we change the random seed, you can see that it actually changes the color, but it also changes, but it also keeps the mirroring, okay? Attributes rendered on the viewport just like points, like normals, like anything, you know, the refresh on the fly. There is no difference in between an attribute and positions and normals and stuff like that. So they're all treated like first class citizen, okay? Okay, moving on, we're gonna look at some really fun stuff that now we can do with attribute as well. So here is our head, and here is our head as well. And this is an edited version of the head to have horns, okay? It's just an edit sub for moving a point with, a, with using mirroring and also using a self radius, okay? There is an operator called the point sub okay which allows us to access point attributes and be able to modify them or do operations on them on the fly such as this you notice that we have this here and we have this here but then when they come into the point so we have what looks like almost like a little mix of both and let's explain what's going on here so if we look at the actual points of parameters, there is a ton of, uh, there is several parameters that we can modify with variables, but we really care right now about just the position one on the top, okay? What we're doing, by default, the points up looks like this, which basically is saying that the position of this mesh is going to be equals to the x, the y, and the z of the incoming geometry, okay? What is interesting about the points up is that we can actually you go ahead and even swizzle what those attributes are okay so i can say well i want the x coordinate from this from the left but i want the y coordinate from the right and all that we have to do is to put a two here to access the y coordinate of the second input and the c coordinate will take you know what will take also from the second input very cool so what you see here now is that we are taking from this area the y and z and from this area, just the S, giving us a little bit more of these forward facing horns, okay? Like anything else in Houdini, things are still persistent, so we can still play with your soft radius and see the horns modified on the final mesh. Even come here and still edit the, do the edit operation on the horns on the fly. Very fun. This is another fun one that we're gonna show here. One interesting operation that we can do is also the yes. vertex split. Uh, the vertex split allows me to pick a vertex attribute, such as UVs, for example, and split geometry in the location where the attribute actually, the vertex is actually split. So in this particular case, if we look here, this is where the UV scene is in this particular head. And we can see that when we switch in between this, a scene is created here where the actual mm -hmm vertices uh, split okay this is basically what our uv sim is and that's as simple as that what we can do now with that is that we can simply use a point operation to swizzle our positions with our uvs so we end up with something that looks like this this is our geometry uvs represented in 3d space and if we look at the uv window here is our 3D geometry represented as UVs, which is interesting because we can even visualize the UV distortion. It's a little bit hard to see here, but let's, but yeah, this one, once it's geometry is in UV, we can do UV stuff to geometry. Once the actual UVs are in geometry, we can do geometry stuff to UVs, such as for example, clipping my UVs with a clip sub. Okay? Or even, if I wanted to, smoothing my UVs with a smooth sub. Some very, very neat things that we can do that this opens for us, right? Uh, the beautiful thing about Houdini is that it really treats its data as just data. There is no this concept that UVs should not be modified by point operators. You can really do whatever you want, you know, with your data. And uh, what this actually, what I hope to do with this course is to provide you tools that you can use to do these operations, okay? 
let's transform this a little bit bigger to be a little bit more in line with the head and what I want to show you is how we can now blend in between our 3D position to our UV position okay beautiful thing about doing all of this is that we had it we have been able to do all of this without a single line of code other than you know just a few expressions that we're actually using okay so it's a very powerful tool that puts a lot of the a lot of power into the actual users okay we are also going to do here a project a uv project okay which creates brand new uvs for this okay these are just uh, uv projections and we can simply use this to actually modify you know to actually create uvs but what i want to show here is that you don't have to switch all points you can even switch all uvs into colors for example if you wanted to or vice versa you can use your colors to create uvs and all of this stuff is fully persistent to where if i actually move my projection it actually affects the uvs at the end okay affects the color at the end rather in this case okay here i can also come here and remove color by saying by going into here and just saying that i don't want any color so it's a very quick way to actually delete attributes if we want to okay but you can really get very fancy when we do with these uh, operations uh, here is an example of something very fancy where we are grabbing the tx of the first input and the ty of the second input tx of the second input and dividing it by two so basically the average in between this guy and this guy which is really just halfway basically okay so yeah this is simply just a snapshot of some of the things that you can do with uh, attributes in Houdini and how you can manipulate data back and forth uh, in between different uh, operations um, we're going to learn a lot more uh, using uh, eventually when we get to the vet section but this is a good start i think for people to really learn about some of the things that we can do with attributes thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video